Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to the ISO 27001 learning series. Through this video, we shall work at understanding the clause number four, context of the organization. Let's read the standard first. It says 4.1, understanding the organization and its context. The organization shall determine external and internal issues that are relevant to its purpose and that affect its ability to achieve the intended outcomes of its information security management system. Note, determining these issues refers to establishing the external and internal context of the organization considered in clause 5.3 of ISO 31000 4.2, understanding the need and expectations of the interested parties. The organization shall determine a interested parties that are relevant to the information security management system and b the requirement of these interested parties relevant to information security note the requirements of interested parties may include legal and statutory requirements and contractual obligations one of the most important changes that has happened in the newer ISO series, be that for 27001 or 9001 or any other standard, is the inclusion of the context of the organization. And through this uh, portion of the change, two necessary elements have been added. A, understanding the organization and its context. B, understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties. Through clause number 4.1, the standard essentially mandates that the, that the organization will work at uh, determining all the internal and external issues that are relevant to the purpose and that can affect the ability of ISMS objective achievement. And in order to do that, the standard is uh, referring us to clause number 5.3 of ISO 31000 2009. If you look at clause number 5.3, Let's read what ISO 31000 has to say. This is ISO 31000 2009, 5.3.1, general. By establishing the context, the organization articulates its objectives and defines the external and internal parameters to be taken into account when managing risk and sets the scope and risk criteria for remaining process. While many of these parameters are similar to those considered in the design of risk management framework, when establishing the context of the risk management process, they need to be considered in greater detail and particularly how they relate to the scope of the particular risk management process. 5.3.2, establishing the external context. The external context is the external environment in which organization seeks to achieve its objective. Understanding the external context is important in order to ensure that the objectives and concerns of the external stakeholders are considered when developing risk criteria. It is based on organization-wide context, but with specific details of legal and regulatory requirements, stakeholder perceptions, and other aspects of risk specific to scope of the risk management process. The external context can include, but is not limited to the social and cultural, political, legal, regulatory, financial, technological, economic, natural, and competitive environment, whether international, national, regional, or local, key drivers and trends having impact on the objectives of the organization and relationships with perception and values of external stakeholders. Establishing the internal context. The internal context is the internal organization in which the organization seeks to achieve its objective. The risk management process should be aligned with the organization's culture, processes, structure, and strategy. Internal context is anything within the organization that can influence the way in which an organization will manage risk. It should be established because a risk management takes place in the context of the objectives of the organization. B, objectives and criteria of a particular project, process, or activity should be considered in light of objectives of the organization as a whole. Some organizations fail to recognize opportunities to achieve their strategic project or business objectives, and this affects ongoing organizational commitment, credibility, trust, and value. It is 
necessary to understand the internal context. This may include, but is not limited to, governance, organizational structure, roles and accountabilities, policies, objectives, and the strategies that are in place to achieve them, capabilities, understood in terms of resource and knowledge, example, capital, time, people, processes, system technologies, the relationship with and perception and values of internal stakeholders and the organizational culture, information systems, information flows, and decision-making processes, standards, guidelines, and models adopted by the organization, and form and extent of contractual relationships. So this is what the ISO 31000-2009 is saying. So when you are looking at using this as a part of building the internal and external context, you should look at the portions mentioned here. What issues, both internal or external, could be looked at that could be relevant to the purpose of the information security management system implementation and that could affect the organization's ability to achieve its intended outcome. Similarly, 4.2 is mentioning identification of all interested parties within the organization and looking at identifying the requirements of these interested parties in respect to information security. But you must realize that once these issues in clause number 4.1 and uh, requirements in 4.2 have been identified, you will be required to close loop them. So once you've identified the issues, how do you intend to handle them must also be documented while several further clauses will ask you to do that. But while you work at identification of internal and external issues, you may want to start closed looping the process by looking at what processes or systems have to be designed to be able to handle such issues. I hope uh, you find this simple video useful. Thank you.